Hi friends and welcome to today's episode of Piano TV. So if you missed the previous video, you might want to go check that out because this is a two-parter and this is the second part. This is our look at famous performers of the 20th century and their experiences with performance anxiety or not. Some of them didn't and we're going to try to like dive into their quotes and stuff and see if we can get some insight for the, from them in uh, in their mind frames and how they cope with anxiety and these little lessons that they can teach us about performing. So in the first video we looked at five performers and in this video we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to look at a, another batch of five performers and talk about them all in turn. So let's get started. Glenn Gould was a Canadian piano player and a fun fact that I've mentioned before here on this channel is that I actually used to live less than a block away from his old Toronto apartment. Anyway, Gould lived from 1932 to 1982 and he's especially noted for his ability to play Bach. He also experienced performance anxiety and he considered giving up performing entirely when he was in his 20s and by the time he was 31 he was like done with performing and instead he focused on an art form that he was the most comfortable with which was recording. Recording. His fear of the audience was also intermingled with something that I didn't see come up with any of the others. It, it was kind of like a like a hatred of the audience. He basically had this perception that the audience was rooting for him to fail. Like he just kind of saw them as this like negative entity. And he was also a germaphobe, so he was afraid of big groups of people because he didn't want to catch anything. You kind of get a sense of his underlying dislike of people in this quote where he says, if an artist wants to use his mind for creative work, cutting oneself off from society is a necessary thing. And more overtly, this one, I detest audiences, not in their individual components, but en masse. Um, is that how you say that? But en masse, I detest audiences. I think they're a force of evil. It seems to me rule of mob law. Gould had a solitary personality, obviously, as well as being a bit of a control freak, which are two traits that don't lend themselves to being a fearless performer. He was also taking a steady supply of antidepressants and anti-anxiety medication and was a self-admitted hypochondriac. And then he died at the young age of 50 from a stroke. So what does this really eccentric, really tragic uh, anti-performer have to teach us about performing? Well, I appreciate Gould's contributions to the music world. He, he was a big believer in freedom of interpretation, for example, and had a lot to teach us in that regard. I think that Gould is actually a really good example of what not to do. So his anxiety roller coastered out of control to the point where, you know, he retired early from performing and his obsessive fear of illness translated into like, you know, things like wearing gloves all the time. And these anxious traits kind of just kept going and going and he was never able to hit the brakes on them. So he ended up being on like a cocktail of medications for, you know, depression and anxiety, things like that. And some of that was probably to his benefit, but I think a lot of that was, was, to his detriments as well. He never really learned how to how to manage his anxiety and because of that it overtook him. So for those those of us who have similar like audience fears or even audience hatred, I think it's important that we we confront it instead of letting the fear completely overtake us. So our youngest performer on the list is Yu Wang, and she was born in 1987, which a year after me in Beijing, and she now resides in New York City. She was already a well-established performer at the age of 21, and she tours the world regularly. She's passionate, energetic, and she just performs all the time. She's a bit of a machine in that sense. Not, not in her playing style. She's very passionate in that sense. The only story of her experiencing stage fright that I could find was a story that she shared about being a young child performing Twinkle Twinkle. So she said, I was always quiet before a concert while the other kids were so nervous. They talk, some are very noisy. I don't understand. Why are you nervous? Until the first time I played Mozart. I wasn't nervous until I was on stage. Then I felt I was in a completely different time and space. My fingers just played. And I thought there is a difference between practicing at home and playing on stage. And further elaborating on why she grew nervous to perform Twinkle Twinkle, she said, maybe intuitively I was struck by the beauty, by the symmetry, by how like something inherent in nature it is. Before, I was like, oh, Mozart, so boring. Aside from this outlier experience of anxiety, she feels entirely at ease with performing, saying things like, for me, that's normal, like talking. And she also says that she feeds off the energy she feels in the hall. 
and she gets to know her performance, her repertoire through performance by doing. She also adds that she needs to perform to feel alive. In performance, she's able to bring out all those nuances that make music great, all the little shades of emotion. She gets the composer she plays, she understands them. And in a way, it allows her to be them, kind of like a chameleon. So here's what she has to say about Mozart and his humor. Mozart's like a party animal. I find I play him better when I'm hungover or drunk. Oh boy, do not try to perform well drunk. At the same time, she saw Mozart's music as being noble, tragic, like a great Greek play. The human emotion is there, but with a lot of godliness in it. Part of her strength, I, I think, lies in her ability to fearlessly forge her own path and shrug off the criticism of others and just kind of ignore the naysayers. And I think there's a, a couple things to learn from her in all of this. So first of all, it's her perception. She has a positive perception of the audience, unlike Gould. So, so to Gould, the audience was a threat, but to Wang, the audience is like a fuel for her. The second thing is that she's able to get inside of the heads of the composers she's learning, such to the extent that expressing their music is almost like expressing herself. She's like a chameleon. She kind of like blends herself in with the composers. And kind of in my own performing life, I've noticed that performing my own music is actually less stressful than performing another composer's music, which is kind of not what you think. Um, but I, I think there must be something to that whole idea of like the wisdom of make music your own. And that's what Wang does really well. And I think that there's something to learn there. Claudio Aero lived from 1903 to 1991 and was a great Chilean pianist who interpreted everything from Baroque to Romantic music. He did tons of performing in his day and tons of teaching as well. In my opinion, he serves as a stark contrast to Glenn Gould because though he experienced performance anxiety, he did learn how to manage it. So in his words, he says, I don't, I don't say that I never feel fear before a performance, but I've learned to channel it. This coming from a guy who once took months to recover from a concert that he had made a mistake in, but I digress. By the time Arrow was in his 20s, he became friends with a psychoanalyst named Dr. Abrahamson, and the two stayed friends for life and Dr. Abrahamson gave him regular therapy treatments, which Arrow credits with giving him more self-confidence and the ability to explore his creativity on the piano and on the stage. Getting professional help might seem kind of like an extreme solution to some people to treat performance anxiety, but it really depends on your situation. And sometimes it can be a really practical solution, like if you're a professional performer, especially. So, you know, for someone like him, it was probably practically essential. And he's the only person on this list that I found who mentioned anything about therapy sessions to manage their anxiety. And I like that he took an active role in trying to manage it instead of just kind of letting it spin out of control and just kind of leaving it up to the cards. And it seemed to work out really well for him. He lived to a ripe old age of, you know, 88. He was vigorous and active well into his elder years in performing. And even between the ages of 40 and 60, he was averaging 120 performances a year, which is, which is a huge accomplishment for a young person, let alone someone who's, you know, getting along in years. Mitsuko Uchida was born in 1948 in Japan, and she now lives in London. She's known for her interpretation of Viennese composers, such as Mozart, and since she spent a lot of her life studying in Vienna, it's not really that surprising that she's good at interpreting them. On the subject of anxiety, she admits to experiencing it always, and then she continues, when you're waiting to go on, you wonder how you can do it. Then, as you step out, some psychological trick occurs. You think about the music, how wonderful it is, how lucky you are to be performing it. And we've heard similar sentiments from Yuja Wang, how the beauty of the music has the ability to overtake nerves and anxiety. Another way that she manages the anxiety that comes with performing is by doing less performances. So she says, I restrict the number of concerts per year to 50, which is a tiny number for any anybody with my sort of career. Some of my colleagues do 75 or 100, or some mad people do 150, but 50 per year keeps me sane. That way, she allows herself the time and space to practice, which is something that she loves and is obsessed with. And she says, when I'm at home, I spend all day around my pianos. My fingers never tire. It's my back, shoulders, and brain that need a rest. I love Uchida's logical and disciplined approach. Like, she seems like a pretty balanced person. Um, she doesn't seem to have, like, the same kind of, like, deep love and desire performance like some others on this list. She doesn't seem to, like, need it. But, um, and she does experience some fear with it, but... Ultimately, what it is that allows her to perform well is her 
love of the music that she's playing. Daniel Barenboim was born in 1942 and is an Argentine-Israeli pianist who plays a mean Beethoven. Even though he's in his 70s, he's still incredibly busy and ambitious and basically inexhaustible. Reading through his interviews, I, I gained a sense of his intense passion for music to almost a fanatical degree. And then, of course, he's very famously brilliant. And he's also really famously angry passionate. <laughs> I wasn't able to find anything that suggested that Baron Boym has experienced anxiety. So, I mean, if you've seen anything like that, just let me know. I, I couldn't come across anything. My gut feeling is telling me that he probably didn't, just based on the way he talks about live performances. So, for example... He doesn't really believe in recordings. Him and Glenn Gould are like polar opposites on this. Um, and I'll, I'll let him explain it in his own words in a moment. But Baron Boim's idea is that he doesn't really listen to live music. He doesn't think it's like super valuable. Like for him, everything is all about the live experience. I wanted to share his words with you, which further elaborates on his feelings towards live music versus recordings. So as much as I admired and respected Glenn Gould, I can't agree with his philosophy. You, you can't say that it's an artificial way of making music, um, but it, it's an artificial way of reproducing music in reference to live recordings. Music is not really reproducible. It only has a reason for being from this moment to that moment in this place and not elsewhere. A whole lot of physical considerations come into being which are not in a recording. When we play the second act of Tristan in an orchestra hall, we automatically, but also consciously play differently than if we were in the pit at Beirut or in another hall. We adjusted the acoustics to the sound of the orchestra hall and to the degree of rever reverberation and so on. So when you record in one studio and then listen to the disc on another machine in another room, nothing is really as it should be. So if I were playing the same piece in your living room, I would probably play it at a completely different tempo. Therefore, it's, it's a very bastardized way of doing music and a bastardized way of listening to music. So there you have it. 10 performers that wraps up our discussion on performance anxiety just kind of like dipping our toes in the water here a little bit and seeing what the master performers have to say on the subject i hope you enjoyed this series as always feel free to leave comments suggestions anything like that i always like reading them even if i'm not super quick to reply sorry about that some things just just never change you can always feel free to visit me on social media like twitter and facebook and instagram i exist on patreon so you can come visit me over there piano tv on Patreon. It's pretty easy to find. And uh, yeah. Anyway, catch you in the next video, guys. His fear... Hey, cat. What is wrong with you? My cat's going crazy right now. <laughs>